Hello, my wonderful viewers, and welcome to another episode of Betty Adams Overanalyzes. Today, we are going to look at some wonderful three-act storytelling. The acceptance of Robin into the family circle of the Robinsons. Now, the three-beat story pattern is one of the oldest storytelling method structures. It predates written stories, and nearly all of the best, most remembered stories follow it, from the epic of Gilgamesh to Shakespeare's works, to the Mousy's Halsey's very own The Mandalorian. A very quick summary is that you set up the world in Act 1, introduce a conflict in Act 2, and then resolve it in Act 3. And the thing about the three-act structure is that it's a fractal thing. There should be three beats to the story arc as a whole, three beats to each episode or chapter, three beats to each scene. Even many sentences follow this pattern. When most people give examples, they try to do it in groups of three, st even stumbling over the end of the sentence if they can't think of a third example, or if there's a, a very natural fourth example. It just feels right to structure what you're saying, what story you're telling, in this pattern of three. Now, the showrunners have informed us that they always envisioned a three-season show, but I would like to take a toe to talk a close look at the two plot threads that intertwine throughout the first two seasons. Each has its own three-act pattern, and they both culminate together in one scene, even though the beats of the second act are very widely. This is Robot Robinson's desire to be accepted by the Robinson's family, and John Robinson's struggle to accept Robot Robinson. Act 1 begins for John first. He is established as a soldier, a Navy SEAL, a man of violence and strong loyalties, a man who loves his family with everything he has. He is a colonist on his way to a new world with his family. The establishing scene for him is the one that opens the season and the series. He is in the circle of his family trying to keep them together. Then we slip into Act 1 for Robot. He is also a creature of violence with a capacity to care. The establishing scene for Act 1 of Robot's story happens in the cave, where he puts his handprint next to the others. He wants to be part of the Robinson family circle, but he is not yet. Then the conflict. Act 2 for John is the conflict of deciding whether or not to let Robot into the family circle, and Act 2 for Robot is trying to make himself acceptable to the family, to make himself less dangerous to them, because he does start out as being very dangerous to the, to the family. He is trying to find that balance of violence and gentleness that will prove that he is a safe member of the family, that he is capable of protecting them while also not being a danger to them. These acts, these two different acts, Act 2 for John and Act 2 for Robot, happen concurrently in time, but even when the two characters are physically close, their acts are following their own patterns that separate them. First one, then the other is separated from the family, and then reunited in this strange double twist. Robot is cast out by Will, even, in, even as John is reaccepted by Maureen. John is ejected into space, even as Robot is reunited with Will. Robot is cast out by Maureen, and then sacrifices his place in the family, acting against the, his own authority figures willingly to protect the Robinsons, just as John is pulled back in. John must sacrifice his place with his family for the greater good of the colony, and falls down a hole, even as Will pulls Robot out of a hole. John moves against his own authorities, figures, and is trapped in his Jupiter as Robot begins creeping around the Resolute on a clandestine mission to free Scarecrow against the wishes of the Resolute's officers. John begins sneaking around the Resolute on a clandestine mission against the will of the Resolute's officers, even as Robot is trapped in the confines of Scarecrow's ship. Each has their own act, too, each act twisting around the other like twin strands of DNA. And then Act 3, the resolution of this twin storyline brings them together, on the resolute, interestingly enough. Both John and Robot Robinson have decided that Robot is a member of the family, and are working towards the goal of reunifying the whole family. Robot, by fighting the orders from Hastings to jump the Resolute out of system, and John, by attempting to first cut through the wall, then by taking an entire room full of guards on on his own. Another example of the fractal nature of storytelling. Think of something. That smile, that broad figure eight that seems to mean home or safe to the robot, shows up three times on Robot's face. The first is when Robot is in the cave with the Robinson children and places his handprint on the wall. The second is when he is playing cards with John and Penny, and John is, shows him the first no-string-detached compassion that he's been given 
in the show so far. Even Will was treating up to this point was treating him like a thing, like a plaything, a toy, or a friend. It, this is the way a child treats a friend, as a plaything that is interactive. And growing up and realizing that your friends are not things, that they are people in their own right and you have to respect that, is a major shift in a growth in Will's character that we get to see. But up to this point, he really has been treating Robot like a thing. It's John who first treats him like a person. And in this second part of this three acts, you get to see the three act fractal again. The camera slowly pans over the broad figure eight of Robot's smile three times to emphasize it. Then in the third time we see this act comes, this smile comes much later. The third act comes much later in the show. And this is the climax of the three act structure between John and Robot Robinson. And it's the climax of the three acts where, wherein the figure eight smile appears. You see, the Robinsons and Wests have just stormed the control room to free Robot from the controls. He's limp and unresponsive in the harness. They free him from the harness and catch him as he falls into their arms. But even as they catch him, as they're talking over him, Penny and, and Judy and Maureen are all talking over him, talking about him, worrying about him. But no one thinks to talk to him until John does. John speaks directly to Robot. And Robot hears John's voice and s cranks his head around, looking past all three of the other Robinsons at present, cranks his head against the pull of gravity, against the natural motion of his own neck, and smiles up at John with that figure eight. This is the climaxing moment of the two sep twin three acts of John and Robot's character arcs, and that strange three act beat to the appearance of the figure eight smile. And there are many things to note here. Of everyone there, Maureen, Penny, Judy, and John, John was the only one who actually thought to talk directly to Robot, not over, around, or about him. John was the, only, John was the one who took the beating to sa save Robot, taking the full brunt of the security guard's defense. No one else was really injured in that attack. John was the only one who seemed to really internalize how much Robot had been suffering as he'd shown when he gently reminded Maureen that they couldn't just assume Robot would still be on their side. John was treating Robot not as a thing that would act predictably, predictably, but as a person who has their own motivations, and when suffering, could change. And notably, Robot Robinson does not respond to any of the other voices. He only turns and looks when John speaks directly to him. He turns and smiles at John. Again, despite the fact that Penny was directly in his line of sight when John spoke, and he had to look past Marine, he cranked his head as far around as he could to make sure John was there. And from the moment that Robot hears John's voice, he starts his lights go from chaotic and dim to form that broad figure eight that seems to mean home, safety, or smile to the robots. But it but it only fully forms for a fleeting moment when Robot is actually looking at John. You can see in the screen capture that the, the figure eight is forming and about to be fully formed, but it's still only partially formed in the screen capture. But after the scene, Maureen, Judy, and Penny run off to greet Will, but John alone stays behind to take care of Robot, to make sure that Robot is safe and well, and make sure that Robot makes it to Will safely. And the next scene is very interesting. It's Robot and John walking alone together down the hallway as the colonists move around them. Now the colonists really don't react to either of them, they just break and flow around them, but some of the colonists do bump into Robot, because Robot is very large and takes up the majority of the corridor, and John reaches out, touches Robot's arm, and is talking to him, steadying him, telling him he's gonna be okay. Because, as far as John is concerned, Robot is now fully a member of the family. And Robot knows he is now fully a member of the family. And so this strange helical three-act pattern of both of them comes to a culmination with the Robinsons gathering together for probably the last time we're going to see them all together for a while. Will joins them, and they're all there. So, <clears throat> they're bo both John and Robot who suffered their own rejection from the family circle. Remember, Judy, Maureen, and Will all at one point rejected John, and everybody had at some point rejected Robot. 
but they are now both firmly and fully accepted into the family circle. Now, at this point, the story goes on seamlessly, because after all, the story of Lost in Space as a whole goes on from here. But their own little twin three-act story is... It's simply one f small fractal in a larger fractal after all, in the larger fractal of the three-season show, in the larger fractal of the three beats that go into each season, and the three beats that go into each episode. That is one of the things that makes this so, so watch show so watchable and so enjoyable. But the story of John Robinson being accepted back into the family closes here. From here on out, they are members of the same family working towards the same goals. When they are separated again, it is with trust and the knowledge that each will strive his best to take care of the members of the family under their care. So, what do you think, my wonderful viewers? Leave a like if you agree and a long comment atomizing my argument if you disagree. Peace out, my wonderful viewers.